Okay, I'm excited about this, man. This is like, I think you you convinced me about Sonder. At, at first, I was kind of skeptical about Sonder, but then you convinced me, and now I'm like a... No, 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 no. <laughs> now no, like, no, I'm no. like a Wall Street <laughs> bed, bed's ape, like <laughs> aping into Sonder right now. No, no, no. Just to set the record straight. I didn't convince you about anything. I, I was just saying like, oh, there's this company called Sonder. I used to work there and it's it's just this, this, this. And then you're the one who's like looking into it and you, you just like, man, you just kept researching yeah. it yeah, more yeah. and more and more and you became obsessed. And you're the one who's trying to convince me about how good a, a company Sonder is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I was, I was skeptical uh, in the beginning. Um, but I actually, I mean, I mean, I don't think people, most people, I didn't know about Sonder. Maybe that's part of my skepticism. I'm sure most of our viewers don't know what Sonder is or who they are. Um, yeah. so maybe, maybe let's start by talking about what is Sonder? Who is Sonder? Yeah. So, uh, Sonder is a hospitality company. Uh, I, I guess a way to think about them is it's like a hotel slash they also provide like apartment hotels. And it's a place for people to stay when they're traveling or just they just need a place to live uh, all around the world. So that that's kind of not that interesting. <laughs> so like what, <laughs> what makes what makes Sonder what, what's cool about Sonder? Like why would why would anybody invest in something like that? <laughs> <laughs> Basically, I just said, oh, it's crazy. There's this company and it's a hotel. <laughs> yeah. The end. <laughs> so, yeah. so what makes Sonder interesting? Let, let me go to I, their I, site. I, I, think think, I think if you look at a picture, you start there you getting go, yeah. like you'll Boom. you'll really understand with the picture. Okay. So so let's let's just throw that so, up there. Yeah, okay, we yeah. got the Sonder website okay. up. So the the picture is basically of a designer room. No one looks at that and thinks, hey, that's a Marriott. It it definitely looks like it's something out of a magazine. Yeah. And that's the unique part about it in that it doesn't cost like a designer room. Yeah, yeah. Right? You, you would think that that would be like ridiculously expensive, but it costs like a normal hotel, um, at least at the moment. So then that that's what, you know, their long-term goal is to keep lowering the cost. But um, it's it's kind of amazing. You, you wonder and you're like, how how is it even, even possible that you stay at a city and the design is different from another city. Yeah. You know, usually when you're staying at a hotel or something, it'll be the same beige walls, a couple beds, and that's it. It's, it's a little dehumanizing, right? You, you open the door, and they're just like, sleep here, and that's it. Yeah. Right? But in a lot of Saunders, you'll, you'll open the door, and there's a living room. Yeah, it feels and, like a home. Yeah, yeah. And then there there would be like a kitchen. and A nice um, home. Yeah, <laughs> nicer than a, my a, home. A designer home. <laughs> yeah, designer. exactly. <laughs> so, so that it, it's just like a very elevated experience, and um, that actually takes a lot of technology. Yeah. So it's very easy to just design, like one or two units, and say you're really good at design, uh, you can design like one or two units, uh, like maybe an apartment or two, and that's it. Uh, because it it'll take like months of planning and doing all this crazy stuff and you'd have to fly out the designer and you do all this stuff but the the cost would be really prohibitively expensive mm -hmm. and for you to rinse and repeat that it would take like a long time so yeah. it, it might take you like three years to pay off uh, all those expenses of flying out the designer and everything right mm -hmm. three years of you know airbnb being your your unit mm -hmm. to to pay that off but but with Sonder, like they're able to do it with a lot lower uh, cost structure, mm -hmm. um, and that's because they're using technology. Yeah. Like for example, you can have an award-winning designer, but they're designing it from SF. Uh, you're not flying that guy or girl all the way out there. Mm -hmm. um, they can just do it on their computer, and they they never have to see the physical place because they're using technology to know exactly what the dimensions of the place are and exactly what the place is without ever stepping foot in there and they yeah. can design the entire thing digitally. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, that that sounds a lot more interesting. It's these beautiful designer homes at like very affordable, approachable, surprisingly uh, affordable rates um, given the quality of it. 
Uh, I, th- I think the one thing that you also didn't quite mention was the 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 quality consistency of of Saunders stays. You know, with a with a hotel, you kind of get these boring like um, nondescript kind of rooms, cookie cutter rooms. Um, but the good thing about hotels over Airbnb, oftentimes, is like there's good quality service, right? You, you're never gonna run out of towels. You're never gonna have a dirty towel. Um, yeah, you have all. Yeah, you, you if you you're never gonna like have some issue getting into your room. You can just go to the front desk and, and things like that. Um, yeah. And so ho- hotels have that over Airbnb. And that's what Sonder also has is that they have, you know, these the, the like elevated design, but also, you know, very consistent uh, and good quality of service. Yeah. Um, but but all again, all of that at affordable rates because of the tech. And that's kind of the exciting thing about Sonder is that they're introducing technology into this old legacy space where like Hilton and Marriott and these, you know, old, old school operators have been, <laughs> um, and, and they're disrupting the, the business model there. Yeah. So wh- why do you think that they're not just doing exactly what Saunders is doing? Who? Oh, the hotels? Yeah. Yeah. So wh- wh- what do you mean by legacy, like old space? Like, uh, can't they just do exactly what they're doing? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that's a very good question to have. <laughs> <laughs> um, that interestingly, I just wrote a blog post about that. <laughs> <laughs> Why um, don't you enlighten us? <laughs> yeah, no, that's yeah. I mean, yeah, and so like the other thing I, that we're you know obviously when you think about investment, you want to think about like the competitive space there. They might be doing something good, but if a competitor can easily copy that, then it's kind of like, do they really have a moat? Um, are they defensible? Is their position going to last? Um, but yeah, it's like I think you know with hotels, there are a number of reasons I think why hotels wouldn't can't easily copy this one again like we like we mentioned you know Sonder is like a tech native young company based in um san francisco uh headquartered in san francisco um and and you know they're they're very tech forward you know they they've had tech from the beginning and so someone uh, a company building that up from the ground up is very different from a company who's used to you know operating mainly in spreadsheets and phone calls and like the yeah. hotel industry they've been around for a long time and they've kind of like kept that model and so that's one thing is the tech culture is not there in in the old hotel um industry yeah and and that, that's actually more important than than uh, people realize mm-hmm. is that culture culture is huge yeah you, you can even have the same people but the culture of the business can determine the entire trajectory of everything oh basically. totally yeah so yeah. so if you're like a, a legacy hotel uh and you're used to talking to vendors and discussing which which software you're going to use and um you know the the software updates every six months like that's your expectation you're not gonna say like hey why why didn't this get fixed in uh, three days right yeah. but if you're in a um like a silicon valley like sf based company then it is like very strange. It's like, why wasn't this fixed in three days? Mm-hmm. Uh, and the, the expectation is like totally different. And uh, they're very iterative and agile in their process. So like improvements are getting pushed out like every day. And um, the the culture and the rate of improvements like very, very different mm-hmm. from, from what people are usually used to. And that's what's required to disrupt uh, incumbents. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I guess an e- example is... Um, why is Blue Origin, Jeff Bezos' like space company, so mm-hmm. slow? And they started before SpaceX, but then SpaceX is able to you know get people in orbit and uh, send people to the International Space Station, do all these crazy stuff uh, that Blue Origin was never able to do, even with more money and just as smart people. It, mm-hmm. It's not like they didn't have rocket scientists. They had yeah. rocket scientists from the beginning for longer. Yeah. But the culture is too much to overcome. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like like one culture is, hey, we're going to give you a billion dollars a year. Just get this done someday. And then the other culture is, hey, we have to get this done. Otherwise, we won't be a planet-faring civilization or SpaceX is going to go bankrupt. And they're just really trying Hungry. everything. Yeah. 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 To get it off the ground. And they they're like at least... You know five ten years ahead yeah because of that and that's crazy too because amazon amazon is kind of is a tech company that and jeff bezos also like you know he is a tech forward person but yeah even in that situation it's it's still it's still difficult but like yeah. even even more so in, in this situation where like these 
CEOs of Hilton, Marriott, Marriott and Hyatt, like they're, they're, they're not the founding. They're not the founders. They're like, I don't know what, what number CEO they are now. You know, there's these plug and play CEOs. Like. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, it, it might've been like a hundred years. Yeah. So, so it, it, even if they wanted the founder, the founder's not going to be around. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so, so basically, the the reason why that's important is that the incentives are different. Mm-hmm. Like we, yeah. we were talking about culture. Um, I mean, there there's one guy who will be paid uh, based on the, you know, you, you improving the numbers by two percent, right? And mm-hmm. they're like, hey, it's been a hundred years. So just uh, try to improve the numbers by 2% in the next quarter and, and we'll pay you mm-hmm. and we'll pay you a salary and that's mm-hmm. it, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. But uh, if you are a founder and you're trying to change the world and change everything, yeah. the, that it, the way it's always been done and you're just like, oh, the traditional hotels are horrible, right? Yeah. yeah. Then um, you're not going to be okay with, oh yeah, just change the numbers like 1% and then all the shareholders will be okay. Yeah. That, that person has a lot of equity in the company mm-hmm. and they, it's like a go big or go home. Like they don't care about increasing their salary by like 5% that year. Mm-hmm. They care about their equity becoming like a billion dollars. Yeah. So the, the, right? the, the, the options that they have in their company, like aligns the personal, you know, the CEO's personal like, um, outcome with the company's outcome. Yeah. Whereas with a, a CEO of, of a Marriott they're you know, like they don't, even if the company got disrupted in 10 years, they're like, oh, well, I'll, I might be retired by then, <laughs> you know? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. And it's like all they need to do, they can just play it safe and make, you know, 2% a year or whatever. I don't know what the, the numbers really are. but Well, yeah. well that, that that's why people are so frustrated with the whole um, golden parachute situation, mm-hmm. right? So the company uh, leadership can be doing exactly what's bad for the company. Long term. Long term. But why why do they get like this massive like multi million dollar severance and they just kind of jump ship when they completely ruin the company like that's why people are are up in arms. Mm-hmm. But we see the same formula play itself out many many times. Like if the field is ripe for disruption, then this formula keeps happening, mm-hmm. right? But if it's not ripe for disruption, then um, you don't really see it happening. Like uh, I don't think it's a big deal that that Coke is not um, headed by the, the founder. Sure, yeah, like that, that makes sense, yeah. Um, but because it's just sugar water, and like yeah. it's, <laughs> I, I don't know how much it, you can disrupt that um, for, you know. Yeah. Uh, but but I think in this kind of field, it can that be matters, disrupted, yeah. and it, it matters. And mm-hmm. that, that should be, you know, very scary. You would think that the incumbents would care a lot more, mm-hmm. but surprisingly, like, they don't because of the incentive structure. Yeah, it's not aligned. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's, I mean, you know, that's one element, the company culture of the two different styles of companies uh, of why, you know, it'd be difficult for, you know, these uh, big box hotels um, to start competing and copying and mimicking uh, Saunders model. Um, and, and, and yeah, I mean, albeit like, you know, culture is always kind of like a, you know, hard to conquer, like hard to measure, like in a quantitative terms kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I, I think there's definitely, I think, I mean, any any VC will tell you that that matters a lot. The people, the leadership matters a lot, you know? And so um, it is hard to measure, but th- th- nonetheless, still very important. I think another another reason why, um, you know, if we think, if we're in the mindset of the hotel uh, hotel company, like what, what would we do? Like how would we compete? Okay, so one thing we could do is think about, okay, we, we actually have a lot of existing properties. Why don't we just convert those properties into these like tech-enabled properties where, you know, um, we we cut our operations costs by half by letting, you know, uh, by using an app instead of a, a person at the front desk and things like that. Um, so one one reason why that's not great is because uh, you know that's not easy to do. It's not easy to like lay off a bunch of uh, you know unionized hotel workers. Um, that's that's a pretty big move you're making, and and that's gonna cause issues. The other thing is. Uh, one thing that I found out as I was, as I was researching Saunders is that a lot of these hotels, they're franchise based models, you know, where, um, Hilton, the company will take like, I don't know, 15% or so of, of the gross room revenue of, uh, of a hotel. And then they, you know, they sell basically their hotel, like Hilton brand and name to this, uh, hotel operator. And they have to pay a 15% a month of 
their gross room revenue fee. And so, you know, now, like, if they wanted to change everything, they, they also have to get, like, the franchisee alignment and, and talk to some of those things. Um, yeah, so a, a lot of the other things would be, like, you know, when you convert an existing hotel, there's going to be vacancies for a while as you, like, you know, put in the technical infrastructure to allow for uh, self-check-in kind of things with an app, getting rid of the host hotel staff getting rid of the front desk and putting something else in there or whatever there's all these so all these reasons why it's hard to convert an existing hotel um i think pr pr for me one of the the biggest things was that going back to that franchise model is you know there there isn't an incentive to cut the operations costs because you know they're making their a lot of their hilton's making a lot of their money from this gross room revenue fee and it doesn't matter whether the hotel operator cuts the operation costs, they're still getting the same amount of money. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think that's a very profound. Yeah. But basically if you get a, uh, you know, the same amount out of uh, you know, $200 a night or something, then um, why does it matter that the the costs are going down? Or why would you even care about working on any of those costs because you're not feeling any of that pain? Mhm. Mm so it it makes a lot of sense like uh you would be investing a lot of money and not getting anything back anything more back out of it yeah 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 exactly so as the uh parent company why would you be investing in all this technology and the software uh when ultimately like it yeah you're not you still gonna get, get the same money anything more right it, it doesn't really matter how profitable the franchisees are um the only thing that matters is your per night costs mm -hmm. so i think that um yeah, it's it's incentives being aligned again. Yeah, um, I'm assuming, there, yeah. there are there are other like uh, examples. I, I keep going back to <laughs> back to space, but like there <laughs> there is the you know the the legacy like the NASA um, SLS system, which is a space launch system, and they they spend like billions and billions of dollars. Like they they can be working on it for over ten years, and ten billion dollars or twenty billion dollars. They, they basically just keep doing that because it's a cost plus uh, mechanism. Mm -hmm. So they're saying, hey, um, however much it costs, we're going to get a profit of like 10% on top. So so they, they don't care about the cost whatsoever. Mm -hmm. like, even if it balloons to $30 billion, $40 billion, it's fine because they just keep getting paid more and more to delay the project. Mm -hmm. And that's why that rocket is never off the ground. And a lot of people think it's never going to get off the ground mm -hmm. um, because they're incentivized to keep delaying and like never actually go to the moon or anything and just collect all that money and, and sit back and relax, right? Yeah, yeah. But when you feel the cost structure, like with a SpaceX's uh, situation, then they're actually trying to lower the cost because that means more profit. Yeah. So, um, mm -hmm. so then you have a whole different outcome. They get there in a fraction of the time. Mm -hmm. Something that would have taken another company 10 years to do, they can do it in one year. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's because they feel the, the cost. Mm -hmm. So in this way, it's, it's very profound that Sonder actually feels the cost because they can lower that, that cost structure. They can increase the margins. Very incentivized too. Yeah, very incentivized. And then and then now they have the room to lower lower that amount um, and ultimately lower the cost for the guest mm -hmm. because they, they want to gain market share and kind of uh, you know control yeah. this this uh, market. So ultimately that's that'll be very disruptive for the market. And at that point, if they lower that cost uh, for the guest, that'll be big trouble for the hotels yeah for sure so i guess maybe maybe so we talked about you know the the culture the tech culture of these companies kind of um not being forward and that can be a, a barrier for them to compete and copy saunders model we talked about converting existing hotels there's a lot of headwinds there and and barriers to that maybe just very briefly um and as we as we wrap up what about what about hotels like actually just opening up a new line of hotels with this property? Th then they don't face all the issues with converting their existing hotels. Um, what, what, why, why wouldn't hotels kind of go after that approach? Uh, yeah, I think, I think they can. Um, so it, it's a bit of a, so, so I think a part of it is also, um, it's a bit of a race mm -hmm. because this is a new category people are just starting to catch on uh, by people. I mean like hotels are just starting to catch on that. This might be very disruptive. Um, but usually these companies, they don't want to just drop everything and shift. Like that's, that's what's required to survive. Right. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so when Kodak realized that the technology that they developed with digital cameras is going to change everything, they should have just dropped all their entire film business and then moved over to digital cameras. But they didn't have the expertise for silicon. They didn't have the expertise for tech. Um, and they were just film experts. Mm -hmm. So they, you know, they waited way too long until they just went bankrupt. And um, yeah, you see the, the same thing in like industry after industry, like Blockbuster not switching <laughs> over and all these different companies, that they're not switching over. Um, and it'll be difficult for hotels to just do that, right? So I think they're going to be very slow to act. Yeah, to develop that kind of uh, muscle. To, to develop that muscle. And by that point, um, I think Saunders is going to be very large and they will be scaled. Yeah, yeah. So if Saunders scaled, what that actually means is if you're in all these profitable cities and they're in the best locations and they've already have like the supply mm -hmm. and uh, they're able to have pricing, um, pricing power and actually provide a really great uh, experience for a slightly cheaper price. Yeah, yeah. Then when that hotel tries to start that building, um, they'll notice that their numbers are not that profitable. Mm -hmm. Like they're not scaled yet. They'll try it. Um, then imagine that you're Hilton or Marriott and you look at your pilot project and your pilot project is losing a ton of money. Mm -hmm. I, I doubt that um, uh, the CEO of that company is going to say, okay, we have to pour in even more money like into all this like you know money losing section of the company mm -hmm. um they would most likely just look at that project and just say oh it doesn't seem to be working out and they'll close it yeah and especially when they compare it to like you know what they're what they're already doing they have a model that you know for them is working pretty nicely you know um yeah as is we're running out of time here <laughs> <laughs> so we're getting a little nervous um yeah yeah, yeah, they have they have a model that's kind of working, and also the, if they were to open up new hotels, it would potentially cannibalize. They're already established in a lot of the popular places, and so if they're trying to open up a new hotel in those spaces, that new hotel is going to start taking away money from their other other hotels when when the when the demand is kind of like you know steady there and limited. Um, and there's more supply there and they're competing with their own they're competing with their own properties essentially when yeah. they open up this new property yeah they'll feel they'll feel the pain right if, if they open up a hotel that's that has that hunger and they're aggressively like lowering their costs and their prices and it's a lot better and whatever then then uh who wouldn't go to that mm -hmm. right yeah and then the the existing like really crazy like money-making hotel um that's all gonna be unprofitable like that that would be very painful for yeah. them to like willingly do that to yeah. themselves yeah for sure yeah. so a lot of uh a lot of barriers or like kind of disincentives for hotels to kind of pivot and try to match sonder and compete with them head to head here um so yeah i think for all those this is one big reason why i'm bullish on sonder is the the legacy competition is they're not in a good place. Sonder has found a strategic position um, that's very favorable to them uh, going forward. Yeah. And I think the, the big question here is about Airbnb, but that we'll, we'll save for another time. <laughs> <laughs>